All right, six two volumes with known cross sections. First of all, if the cross section is perpendicular to the x axis, we use functions uh, f of x, so solved for y, and we use x bounds. If by some chance the cross section is perpendicular to the y axis, then we use g of y uh, type functions. They should be solved for x, and we use y bounds. So we'll do a pretty straightforward one first. So if the function itself is x squared, all right? So this length here, this fx, is simply x squared. It's the length of the cross section. If what they're going to do with this cross section is build squares up off of it. So what they said is pick square cross sections. So think of this as the bottom of the square, and then the top of the square would literally come off the paper. So it is going to be an x squared by x squared square coming straight out at us. And I know that's hard to think of, but build this straight up towards your, the user here. So the area of that square would be x squared times x squared or x to the fourth. This is the area of the cross section. Okay? If you'll take the volume of that, all you do is you say from 0 to 2 of that area of the cross function, of the area of the cross section with respect to x. So volume is 0 to 2 of x to the fourth dx. Okay? Go ahead and do the mass set off from there. If I take the same picture and I look at the cross section that's perpendicular to the y-axis, we have to do a couple of things. One, we solve the equation for x. To solve the equation for x, we say that is x is equal to rad y that we've got written down here. And now we've got to understand that the length is no longer rad y. From here to here is rad y. And from this whole length is 1. So this gy is actually 1 minus rad y. All right. So if we're dealing with 1 minus rad y as the base of a square, then again, the base times height would be 1 minus rad y squared. What are the, this time we look at from 0 to 4, because again, we're looking at y values to, to bind it. Volume is 0 to 4 of the cross section squared, 1 minus y to the 1 half squared dy. We do a little bit of math from there. Fundamental theorem of calculus, f of b minus f of a. We bring it home with some, again, units cubed. About the only other thing they'll do is they'll start introducing different figures. So instead of squares, in this particular case, I did one with semicircles. So if you think about semicircles, again, in this case, fx is equal to x squared is the diameter of the semicircle. To find area of a semicircle, we'd actually right again here before we go totally bananas. Notice the radius is x squared over 2, and that's because this bit here would represent a diameter if there was a semicircle sitting on top of it. Now, I'm going to take this pi over 2 here, and I'm going to jet it out front, and that's what this pi over 2 represents. So now I need the radius squared, but we already talked about the radius squared is x squared over 2 itself. So here's x squared over 2 for the radius, and I square it, so I get radius squared. So this volume is equal to pi over 2, 0 to 2 of x squared over 2 squared. I knock out some of the math. I brought out that 2 squared is 4. I brought that else out in the denominator here. Without too much trouble, I know that 0 to 2 from x to the fourth from part 1 was 32 over 5, so I just subbed that straight in. So again, this one had a little bit more to follow, but the basic concept was if it's a semicircle, this whole bit here was a diameter, and I had to convert it to a radius. And also a semicircle would be pi r squared divided by 2. So there were quite a bit of fraction things I had to shove out front as constants. And that's good enough. Thanks.